Hello guys, me Carson, this is a the Carter 95, and welcome to another edition of Carlos Santos Visits the Master Hall of Fame Astronaut. So, this is part two, it has mostly pictures, no videos, but I'm making a video presentation of the snapshots I took while I was at the, those exhibits and so forth. So, let's begin. So let's start off with Jeff Gordon's 1997 car, which I saw on the Glory Road. So, and the other is so. So, while we're doing the interactive uh, thing in the Glory Road section of the museum, I came across his favorite paint scheme, and usually. He drives a DuPont Chevrolet, so basically, I'd say driving Chevrolet is my favorite manufacturer, and I've always liked this kind of car, the Chevy Monte Carlo, you know, so let's move on. So inside Jeff Gordon's 97 car is the rear greenhouse and the front wind front of his car or the driver compartment and the windshield so let's start over the rear greenhouse so all you see there is the wedge where you turn the rounds of wedge on the car and then the track bar mount or not the mount but on the rear deck lid you know? that's what I'm trying to bring up on this discussion of how this fast call train was amazing to me. So and then you have the nano ducks right there and not much to see, it's just just a few techn technological parts in there and then so forth. So onto the right side of the power point. You see the steering wheel, you see the shift knob, and you see the tachometers that most NASCAR drivers see when they have a problem with the car, like like the electrical issues, like I'm trying to think, volt, the voltage meter and the tachometer, meaning like the how fast you go on pit road and so forth. And sometimes the water pressure, which is important in any given 500 miles, which if you don't have the durability to withstand the tough terrain, you're going to be out of the race. Right, so that's all I have to say about that 97 car. So we're still in Jeff Gordon. Still in. Here are his biography information. So he had 805 starts, 93 wins, 81 poles, and eventually, in 1977, he started his racing career. Racing dirt. That's all. And basically, NASCAR running dirt. That eventually happened just a few months ago. At Bristol, you know. So there it is. But in the right side, you see uh, the things that Jeff Corn used as part of his equipment, which is his 2015 steering wheel, his 2015. Oh, I think it's a trophy. Bill France will award of us excellent in 2016. He Got his top ten. Yeah. As you can see, guys, <laughs> I'm on my laptop, and basically I just shrink all the the photos to tell you the truth. And basically, they're very, very small fonts. So whatever you guys can make the pictures larger, it'd be would be a common courtesy not to criticize me, okay? So, 
Let's move on. So for Gordon's teaming, Jimmy Johnson, here's his 2006 color. Well, why do we keep making mistakes? Okay, here's his 2016 color. Because Chevy SS, nobody really liked the Gen 6. And as many of you on Facebook and other social media platforms, Keep chipping away and chipping away at it and saying that this is the worst gen car ever out of the seven generations that have been introduced and was born and basically people will say whatever their minds tell them. So let's see the inside of his car. So let me fix a few things. So here's what well, most of the NASCAR drivers have driven so far, like most of them, and including my favorite driver, Kyle Larson. He's driven this Gen 6 car, so let's look at the body inside of it. On the left side, it's the front end of the windshield, and when I saw you the Jeff Orange 97 car, it did not have the, the side impact like the head restraints, you know, like you didn't have the Hansa pipes back then, and you didn't have the shoulder rest and all that, so when you get in a hard crash, your head's secure, so you don't break a collarbone or spine and so forth, so, and vice versa. And then on the right side, you see the rear end of the greenhouse and basically United Ups is more developed, you know, and that's the fuel tank I believe in there. Yeah, I can tell but yeah it's still small and fine print but let's move on. Here's Jimmy Justin's uniform collection which I'm glad he is a seven time champion because not many race fans can see their favorite drivers up close, but I bet Jimmy Johnson would put his uh, uniform collection to the public, which rarely, rarely they do, but he decided to do it instead of putting it in his garage or in the delivery box. So, here's yeah, no part to it, sorry. Let me double check. I did have two parts, but I'm going to forget about it. So, here's Jamie Johnson's uh, <laughs> final race cup um, typo errors. <laughs> so, here was his final cup race at Phoenix race car. <laughs> I can't speak to that, but yeah. It eventually ended up in the Hall of Fame recently, Hall of Fame Museum recently, because as you can see up close, he had a left front fender of somebody, and then in the rear, I don't think you can see it up close, but he did rub up some people, but who cares? It was his final race, he wanted to do well for his race fans, and eventually he was the most recent driver just to get a top five in his final race and Gordon got six so not bad for those two Hall of Fame drivers so let's move on yeah. so here is Tony Stewart's two third championship in NASCAR race car this is the 2011 Office Depot Chevrolet so you know that everybody realized that he won five out of the ten chase races. So. Kind of like 2006, I believe. Like, he lights it up in the fall races, and eventually his third championship was a charm. Oh, look at this moment and say, hey, I really don't the field. Here's his memorabilia collection, I believe, and as you can tell, 
I did not spell memorabilia correctly. Cool. There his, there's his uh, sprint car, his helmet, gloves, old pictures, and all the memories he's made, and his first cup championship, Winston Cup championship, his second cups, and the All-Star race he won only in 2009. And then I can't see the thing up close in the bottom right corner, but he wants something like the racing in excellence. So. And then the Wanda Wilson memorabilia. What can you say? He always liked golf. And then basically, like doing things old school that not many modern day drivers would do. But eventually, he had a great life. And was a great crew chief. That's for Hendrick Rick Hend I only mentioned Rick Hendrick because I don't know what other race teams you drove for, but as I remember when I was looking up looking at the car up close in the museum, he did try for our was a mechanic or crew chief for Cal Yarborough, so that's all I can remember, but that's how eventually being in a museum is all about just to educate and basically know up close what each of these mechanics, crew chiefs, drivers do for a living. So. Here's Denny Halen's modern 2020 FedEx car. As he won it in the day, 2500, he got his race car back recently, February, then had his race team at the Trent, well, I think the NASCAR Hall of Fame people wanted his Daytona car to be, you know, right in the museum, I'm telling you, how much that stay there, and then, here were the recent champions in last year's edition of the COVID-19 season, Let's say 2020. In trucks, it was Sheldon Creed. The expanding series belonged to Austin Cindric. And then for the Big Boy series, the Cup series, Chase Elliott is American driver, Cup driver. And let's see what we have. I was amazed on this snapshot I took, which was the NASCAR War Wagon, so basically I was looking at this up close and saw all the tools in there, the small HD TV, and so forth, and I, I was interested in taking this photo because it shows that mechanics, crew chiefs, and so forth, and pit crew members actually have used this or utilize this very important war wagon because they do it just to fix the tires, the engine, the body, and the chassis each time they make a pit stop. So eventually it makes the difference between winning and losing a race. So basically that's all they do. You know, and I hope you guys learned a lot as I went through two parts of my visit to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and hope you you go on my YouTube channel Happy Carnival Night Five so all I can say is hit the thumbs up button if you like the video so much. Click on that bell button if you want to subscribe for more content. Or if you want to share some thoughts and feelings with fighters in the community, share a comment below the description. So, make it happy for another time. I'll have a great day and peace out.
So we're coming to the end of my YouTube video right now, so give a thumbs up button if you like the video so much. Click on that bell button to subscribe for more content and if you saw the recent video interesting, share the comment right below the description so you can share some thoughts and feelings with everybody in the community and make them feel welcome. So I make a happy Corona 95. You'll have a great day and peace out.